Jean-Claude Van Damme has skyrocketed on Hollywood Olympus after an extremely successful release of Bloodsport in 1988. Up to 1995, every movie with him in a title role harvested more evergreen papers than the previous one. With maybe one exception, when Jean-Claude tried to be an actor in a 1993 movie No Way to Run. In 1995, his fees started to fall on the ground, and every next movie with a Belgian star in a title began to sink in terrible ratings. Today I want to focus on one of the most successful Van Damme's movies that has ruined career of muscles from Brussels on its peak in the end of 1994. It was Street Fighter, a movie driven by Capcom, game publisher, to promote their stuff. Jean-Claude Van Damme could get involved in another fighting game-based movie, which was in work at the same period of time. Creators of Mortal Kombat desperately wanted to see him in the role of Johnny Cage, who was originally made up based on Van Damme himself. Unfortunately, New Line Studio was a much smaller production company at the time, and just couldn't afford to satisfy excessive appetites of legendary fighter. Mortal Kombat had a total budget of 18 million dollars and out of this money, filmmakers wanted to create something worthy. Capcom was a successful big publisher company and they offered 8 million dollars to the big action star. Who knows how far the career of Francois would have turned out to be if he would have taken Johnny Cage over Colonel Guile. Eventually Mortal Kombat gathered more loot in box office, was acknowledged and nominated in several awards, while Street Fighter was good only for Golden Raspberry. Oh, and Raul Julia was deservedly so nominated for a best supporting role on an unknown a word that nobody cares about. Still, his acting has been praised by many, and some people even consider it to be one of his best performances. The legendary actor got in the movie to make his kids happy, as they were huge fans of Street Fighter 2 game. He spent a lot of time studying Benito Mussolini's gestures, impressions, poses, the way he spoke, and all in all put his soul in Bison's character. Actually, his role of Bison was the only worthy thing in the movie, because everything else was terribly wrong. A movie director, Steven D'Souza, was not a movie director. He was a screenwriter. Capcom executives wanted D'Souza to write a scenario for the movie because he was on a really good track after being involved in writing scripts for such triumphant pictures as Die Hard, Commando, 48 Hours, to name a few. Steven did a pose and claimed that he will provide a story only if producers would let him chill a bit in director's chair. He had hung out on sets of Die Hard and a couple of other movies and thought that it was enough to become a movie director of a blockbuster worth of 35 million dollars. Literally everybody else and set didn't think so and allowed themselves to push hapless movie maker around. Every janitor tried to give him advice and tell the poor guy what to do and how, let alone actors. Yeah, martial art fighters were not martial art fighters. Filmmakers had a very strict deadline and couldn't spend enough time for a proper casting. Half of budget went directly to two lead stars, and the rest of cast was hired from streets for a pack of chips. A game-based movie had nothing to do with the game it was based on. Street Fighter has no street fights, neither it had any tournament of any kind at all. Later Steven D'Souza stated that he wanted to distance his movie from a game, probably to troll producers. I don't see any other reason for this decision, as the movie was supposed to resemble a game, as was supposed to be as close to it as it is possible. Yeah, the movie has a scene with a, some sort of tournament arena at the beginning, but that's it. There wasn't even a fight on it. Only some awkward waving of a foil toy sword. As filmmakers were tight on schedule and budget, they couldn't spend enough time on teaching those randos on set how to actually fight. Steven DeSouza counted on giving them some time to learn at least a few moves while shooting scenes with Bison first. But at the beginning, Raul Julia came to a shooting set after a pretty difficult operation due to his terrible illness, and DeSouza decided to postpone shooting him till he recovers a bit. So filmmakers had to shoot fighters before showing them how to fight, and they picked up some moves from extras right before filming scenes. But even without this problem, there still was not enough time for a martial art trainer to teach each actor, there were too many characters. Initially Steven D'Souza didn't want to include so many heroes in his movie, Capcom in its turn wanted to promote as many game characters as it is possible. Director and executives had agreed upon having 7 game characters, but little by little, producers still manipulated D'Souza to include more and more of them, they ended up with 15 characters, more than two times above the number that Steven rightfully considered to be already way too much. All of them looked like clown fights and director had to cut fights in pieces and clue those pieces together in order to make something resembling actual combats rather than just waving limbs. Some fighting scenes, like this for example, he had to completely remove from Final Cut, because Kylie Minogue as Kami and Ming Nguyen as Chan Li fought like this.
Looking at the final result later on, Mindana Wen cringed and was about to lose it. Until George Clooney calmed her down and told that it was, yeah, bad, but not that bad to destroy a career. Actually, many people involved in production managed to get away with it after movie release. Raul Jr. gave one of his best performances and was praised for his role. Sadly, he has died in a young age of 54 from stomach cancer two months before Street Fighter reached theaters, and I assume that he hasn't seen this mess. Steven D'Souza the same year took part in writing a script for extremely successful The Flintstones. So, as a writer, he was pretty much covered. As a director, well, let's just say that he decided to stick with a screenwriter career. After Street Fighter, he also worked on Judge Dredd and failed in 1998 after getting involved with Van Damme again. In his flop, Knock off. After that, he went to write stories only for TV movies and TV series of questionable quality. Universal Picture Studio got a good box office. Even with those devastating ratings the movie got from audience and critics, it still harvested almost $100 million worldwide. Capcom? also took a portion of box office pie and, in addition, one after Street Fighter 2 Turbo was released together with the movie, got a big clout and became a huge success. They also wanted to additionally capitalize on the movie by releasing a lazy, cash-grabbing Street Fighter the movie game. One of terms in initial contract for each actor in the movie was to be involved in this game. Characters from the movie were uncontrollably shaking on screen, animation made gamers' eyes burn, still the game was received just fine and, yeah, publisher won again. As for Jean-Claude Van Damme, he was as by being a douche on set. There were a lot of problems with the lead action star. The main one was his out of control overusing of different legal and illegal substances. Muscles from Brussels appeared on set late, if at all, with a whiskey bottle, high as f. While waiting for him, crew had to shoot random stuff and imitate a proper shooting by filling screen time with improvisations of unexperienced and untrained actors. When Jean Claude would finally arrive, he would turn on diva mode and behave himself in every possible way, or spend time seducing Kylie Minogue. Well, one thing didn't interfere another. All in all, the whole team spoke about working with Van Damme unkindly. Rumors about his quirks spread all over Hollywood, and studios began to avoid working with the actor. Screenwriters stopped to write screens for him, producers stopped to invite him on sets of those films that could count on something more sufficient than a can of beans in box office. Van Damme has lost his superstar status, began to play in one flop after another. By the end of 20th century, Century Belgian dancer completely vanished from big screens and had a chance to appear on them only once in 2012 in the role of a bad guy in Expendables 2. Well, for now I have a video that pretty much covers up the whole rise and fall of Jean-Claude Van Damme. If you haven't watched it, then go ahead and watch. There are most of his iconic movies with detailed illustrations and animations and stuff. Till the next time, cheers.